All right, so if you follow the channel at all, you know I had the iFlight Bumblebee Cinewhoop, and I was flying it to tune it, and got a little too close to snow and burn out the flight controller. So had to get a new flight controller for it, which is the iFlight Success A. It's a 40 amp all-in-one 30 by 30 flight controller and 32-bit ESCs. So I figured it's a good opportunity to show how this thing comes apart, and then also feature this iFlight Success 40 amp all-in-one ESC flight control board. Okay, to take the Bumblebee apart, I have all the screws off. It's really just the top plate, so it's pretty simple. And the construction of this is really simple. From there, we have the DJI Air Unit, so we'll pull that out. And I already have this apart, as you can see, but just kind of pieced it together to show you how it goes together. So this plugged into the pin header there. Can remove this piece. Of course, we had the connectors for the battery leads, and then these were plugged into the back of the DJI Air Unit for the antennas. Get those two things removed out of the way. From here, you can take these ducts off, so those just slide up out of the way. There's a duct on each side. And then at the bottom, you have your iFlight Success A 40 amp 32 bit ESC flight controller. So, this is an all in one board with an MPU 6000 gyro on it. And this one is, of course, dead. So taking a look at the new iFlight board, let's see what we get in the box. Of course we get some rubber grommets here. You have it if you, you do have a grommet here also for if you're going to put a cap on the end of the USB-C connector and then the grommets to connect it to the frame. You get a 50 volt, 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor. It's a Rubicon brand. So that's nice, 50 volt is just a little bit more headroom if you're using 6S on this, which it does support. You get a lead for XT60, wire harness to go to a DJI Air unit. Yep, and confirm this is the wire harness that came with it, wired up to the DJI Air unit. So this is the exact same pinout. So you can just wire that direct to a DJI Air unit here. You can see, it just plugs right in there. Get another wire harness and I believe this is if you're going to wire up a separate receiver, and these two wires would go to that, or VTX or something of that nature. So this is a secondary wire harness you have here, and we'll show the wire diagram here in a second. And then the flight control board itself. So this is an F4 flight controller. This has an MPU 6000 gyro on it. So if I flip it over, the gyro is right here. It says, this has BL Heli 32-bit ESCs, and here's the, the FETs for those. You can see plenty of capacitance, and then here's your primary port for connecting all kinds of things. We'll show the wiring diagram here in a second. And we have some solder pads here as well to connect. So between this pad or this pin header and then these solder pads, that takes care of all your connectors. Has a USB-C connector type, has 8 meg of onboard flash, and then these again are 40 amp. 50 amp burst ESCs. This can accept 2 to 6S LiPo voltage, but it is important to realize this does not have an OSD chip. No OSD. So the only, it's really meant to connect to a DJI air unit, but you could use it for other things. It just, again, you're not going to have an analog OSD with this sucker. Has a 2.5 amp 5 volt back for powering all your peripherals. Of course, has a voltage sensor and a current sensor as well. Beeper pad. RSSI, four motor outputs, eight pin to the DJI Air unit. It's a 30 by 30 configuration with four millimeter holes here that then grommet down to three millimeter once you put the, the grommets in there. And then it's about a 40 and a half millimeter uh, square here when you're taking into account these outside edges here. Taking a quick look at the wire diagram, you can see a five volt out, T2 for transmit, R2 for receive ground, R1 receive, T1 receive, ground, and a 10 volt pad here as well. And that just wires straight up to your DJI Air unit. With this configuration, you'll be using UR1 in MSP mode, and then 0RX on UR2 S bus. Make sure you have it set to fast baud if you have your DJI Air unit set to fast baud as well. And that is that configuration. Other configurations here are just hooking up the Air unit for the video part of it and then having a transmitter using the same pin header here and those 
additional wires that we showed and you can hook it up to of course FR Sky and other transmitter types you have a 5 volt a ground and then the signal here again same kind of setup MSP for your OSD information then RX on your UART 2 now if you did want to wire up it, we have these solder pads here as well so you have a T3 a T6 a ground 3.3 volt an R3 R6, 5 volt, and an LED. You can see how we can wire that into different configurations here for maybe a TBS video transmitter or another type of receiver here. Same thing for spectrum here as well. So you have that 3.3 volt for a spectrum receiver. Again, in this configuration, you would then be using your UART3 for serial. We're passing that through for your transmitter and then your different configurations in beta flight here obviously for your different receiver types that you're going to have connected buzzer and led support here we have a buzzer pad kind of in the middle so you can feed off of that led 5 volt and ground here coming back to these same pads then in this area and of course if you wanted to connect the gps unit to as well that is available so you can connect the GPS unit and you can see you can use UART 6 for wiring that up and getting that all set up in Betaflight here or in iNav. So I'm going to show you some spectrums on this board here as I'm talking about it that is from the flights with this and what I really like about this board is the performance. You know for an all-in-one board I see really good gyro noise results from it. I don't see any electrical noise and just it's really an ideal gyro performance I mean so that's a testament to the iFlight Bumblebee as well it just is a really good performer noise wise but this you know it's a testament to both things because the frame has to be good and then also the gyro and the, all the electronics in this board have to be good and then with this being an all-in-one you know that's a little more tricky than normal uh, other all-in-ones have some electrical issues because of capacitance and feedback loops and stuff into the gyro and on the stock Bumblebee, you're not even getting that much capacitance on the lead. You're getting a 220 microfarad 50 volt capacitor. So you're not even using this larger one that it comes with it. You know, this is just the stock capacitor that comes with the Bumblebee. So that's really showing me that this board performs well noise-wise electrically. And as you can see from the spectrum traces here on the screen that, you know, all around this is a good choice. The obviously downside with this is if anything goes, like I had two ESCs blow because they got snow into them, obviously the whole board's trash. This board's about the $60 board, so, you know, it's not really that bad of a value. You're getting a flight controller and 4-in-1 ESC, 40 amp, 50 volt peak, BL Heli 32, MPU 6000 gyro. I mean, it really has everything it needs packed in here and has all the different connector types to connect things up to it. The only thing it's missing, you got to really be aware of, is the OSD. No analog OSD on this bad boy. Okay, so that is it for the iFlight SuxX-A 40 amp all-in-one flight controller 40 amp ESC with an F4 processor on it. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helped.